thank you very much for having me here at Imaging USA. I'm excited to be able to share with you a few ideas about the art of photography from stills to video. So I think that's really been sort of a transition the last few years, really moving into that beautiful world of videography. But I love travel. I absolutely love travel. I love landscapes and seascapes, uh, working with creative Im imagery and also shooting wildlife, as we mentioned before. I do like to work with the double exposures. And I'll show you a little bit more about that. The double exposure that you see, that was a self-portrait that I did a few years ago in the camera. So you can actually do this, take a photograph. This is meaningful if you're doing a type of portrait work or if you're doing any type of uh, work with models. It's a really beautiful way to work. So travel, we'll get right into it. This is one of my very favorite locations, Santorini. It's one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's just very peaceful. And when I shoot, when I travel, I think about what lenses I want to bring, what time of day, and I make sure I'm doing a lot of different scouting. So I like to bring a 14 to 24, it's a wide angle lens. I like to bring a 24 to 70, it's a mid-range zoom, and also a telephoto zoom. But time of day is really essential here, working with this golden hour, having a ship come in to this beautiful city in Santorini. So timing is, is very, very essential. So this is Lake Lead. I got there about an hour before sunrise. And, and the reason I like to get there early is I want to get a feel for like the cloud direction, the weather conditions. So you really get an idea of what you might need. Also, the lenses you might need to reach for. You might need different compositions. You know, you have plan A, plan B, in case the light isn't quite where you need it. But be ready you know, for that moment that you're going to make the shot. So here, as the sun came right over the mountainside, making that shot. This was such a fun shot. So I think getting travel shots, but it's really important to have fun and, and create a sense of energy. And what I like to do is to create a sense of time passing. So with this shot, it's actually four shots. So it was low light, I'm creating a sense of motion, conveying time passing by shooting the water taxis. So four seconds each for each water taxi. So as it moves. So to me, it creates a different type of energy. So you have different ways to portray items. So I always love to do something with long exposure. It's more interesting. To get into the realm of really long exposures, you need something like a 15 stock neutral density filter. And I love that world because you can convey the passage of time and create a beautiful image that is both tranquil, you can see the water is very smooth, but you're also painting with light. So the, get the clouds painted across the sky. Five minutes, so five minutes you can actually shoot. So that to me is a beautiful story and you're conveying what happens over time. So I like that energy, I like that tranquility and that peacefulness. 15 stop neutral density filter. So I carry three stop, six stop, and a 15 stop and of course polarizer. You never know, but that will help you tell your story. Balanced all plane. Uh, when I arrived here again, it was a little early. Um, the clouds were particularly interesting, but I wanted to make that 14 millimeter shot, something really, really beautiful. So I reached in, got a 15 stop neutral density filter and shot. So 14 millimeters edge to edge, you have this motion of the clouds that happens over time. And this beautiful story, it's a beautiful story that you can tell. And meanwhile, you, your friends are walking into the shop because they can't understand how, why you're still shooting after five minutes. So it's crazy fun. This is Iceland. And I think that this is so interesting when you go to different places, you know, how can you tell a story that's not the same story that everybody else is telling? You want to come away with something a little bit different. So to convey the passage of time, create a sense of tranquility, and I also wanted to play up how soft the water would be and how rugged the terrain is. But using a five, uh, 15 stop neutral density filter, you have streaks of the clouds across the sky and it really works with that angle. So it's really right, a beautiful way to work with. <laughs> infrared photography. So I wrote a book a few years ago on infrared photography. I, I love the process, I love the art. 
but what I loved was the sky. So I thought it was so dramatic. So I definitely wanted to shoot it with infrared. And as I was kind of framing up, and I had a DX camera with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, but it was a DX camera. This elephant walks into the scene and it just took my breath away. It was so absolutely beautiful. So I made the shot at that moment. So it's, it's very different. And being in that infrared, just in and of itself, it's different. It's different than what most people are shooting. So you have something that is unique and beautiful. So travel sort of a recap. I like the Z8. I like the Z9. Each camera has different features that make it very interesting. The little Z30 is amazing. Uh, that's been fun to work with. Sometimes I'll just carry a 600 millimeter lens and then I have the Z30 just to get those other shots. This, but it's really wonderful. The 14-2, 24 millimeter lens. So I'm getting underneath the trees and just shooting up. And I like that perspective with nature. I just feel like I'm a part of it. It gives you a sense of place. So I do love to work with that kind of idea. What are you hiding here? Have you been here? This Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn Bridge Park is so beautiful. So anytime I go to New York, I'm shooting this. So everybody pretty much comes for sunset, which is beautiful. But I wait till the blue hour. And the blue hour is really not the blue hours, the blue 15 minutes if <laughs> you shot that. So it's a little bit, but it's so worth the wait. And so working with that, and as I go deeper into the evening, the exposures get longer, the light gets more amazing, and absolutely love to be able to shoot this. Creating starbursts, add a little sparkle into the scene. So I always like to incorporate that into my shots. Yeah. Times Square. This is so much fun. This is a fisheye lens. So basically I'm doing the same thing, getting underneath and shooting right up above me. And it, it really gives you some perspective. If you've been to Times Square, you know it's a big frenzy. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of activity. But here I just feel like I'm a part of this composition. So I do love this life. This is really fun to work with. So scouting is super important. So when you're traveling, uh, kind of walking around, knowing where you want to be. And I saw the umbrellas at night. I thought, oh, I've got to come back. And please, let it be a day with a beautiful blue sky and no clouds. <laughs> it, was a, it was a big ask, but it was beautiful. So what happens is, middle of the day, the lights really bounce around, getting on all the buildings, illuminating the buildings. You have this beautiful path of umbrellas and that sparkle of light in the middle. So it's a really beautiful, interesting story. So, London, has anybody been to London? Yeah, it's, it's fun, right? It's a fun place to travel to, low stress, it's fun. I love Tower Bridge. So anytime I go to London, the first thing I photograph is going to be Tower Bridge, so I like to do this. So the idea of this type of shot is that I want to convey a sense of time passing. So I'm virtually standing where this gentleman is. I have my tripod and have a cable release. And I'm looking over my shoulder and waiting for the buses. So as the buses come by and make a shot, in a fraction of a second, you're expressing what happens over time. So you can feel the rush of the bus. You can feel that energy. And that, that goes into making really fun shots. So consider different shutter speeds to be able to tell your story. Time lapse and video. This has been really fun. I absolutely love working with time lapse and video. Sorry. I was in Colorado in the fall. I was a wee bit early. <laughs> and I found the only patch of orange leaves, I think, in Colorado. But grabbed my 14 to 24, virtually scrambled up a side of a mountain. But using that 14 to 24, just getting so close and getting those leaves and those trees coming again, those interesting angles, so playing off with those interesting angles. Again, this sparkling sunburst is absolutely beautiful. So the sparkle of the sunburst really gives soul to a photograph. So you don't need a lot with something like this. You can record for 15 or 20 seconds. I personally like 4K. I like 120 frames per second. That is like my secret sauce, what I love to work with, because you could take this back in post and extend that time frame that you were. So you have a lot of flexibility. 
this is Paul. <laughs> so getting underneath the trees, having these leaves coming down, is part of it you know, is photography, you're, make, you're recording, you're documenting events, but part of it is the experience of being there. It is such a, a, a beautiful experience, memorable experience to have all these leaves coming down. So I, I feel like adding video to the photos, it, it rounds out that travel experience. Back in London, we have Tower Bridge, a different view. So a really different concept is time lapse. So I keep my cameras set up for two seconds apart. So I'm pretty much ready to be able to shoot time lapse at any given time. The thing about time lapse, unlike the leaves videos that you saw where it's only going to be 15 or 20 seconds, you have to stand there for like 45 minutes <laughs> and you got to devote that time. But when you're done, you have something that's really neat. It's like fast action video, essentially, but then you're showing it. Because if you stood there and watched the bridge, it would be very long, kind of boring. But this fast action kind of energy video is a lot of fun and beautiful to be able to portray. And if one been to Slovenia, it's absolutely gorgeous. The moment before sunrise, we have these beautiful clouds. Now here is that fast action video type of thing because if you're watching the clouds, you really don't have an understanding of what's happening over time until you see that story in review. So that's amazing to me. So I had the camera set up and shot for about 45 minutes and then had a secondary camera. So this is key. Have your camera, have your tripod, have another camera because you're gonna get really bored in the middle and shoot something like this, and it was just so beautiful and so expressive. So I was really happy to work with that. So video, I feel like it rounds out. Hey, 34th Street, Empire State Building, wonderful cloud formation. So anytime you have the opportunity to photograph clouds, I would jump on it. It's beautiful. So not only shooting the video, I like to go down into the streets and collect sounds, to so record sound to go with your videos. I couldn't do this here because it's kind of loud and crazy, but I love that aspect of it. Collecting sound, even with the squirts or street sounds or whatever it is, it adds more energy and interest to your videos. I grew up in Florida. I adore seascapes. So it's and the same type of an experience, getting there an hour before, waiting to see what's happening with the clouds, making decisions about, okay, what lens, what camera. So 14 to 24 working with this, I knew I needed an exposure that would be in the four minute range. It's easy to do when it's pitch dark because this was, there was no light on this whatsoever. But what was happening was the city lights behind me were falling onto this lifeguard tower. So it illuminated the tower over time. So, but, so you have this hint of the blue hour, which is absolutely beautiful and part of that. Again, it's, it's recording the passage of time and giving you some, and basically painting with light. It's really, really fun to do. So I like to get into my shots. And I mean, literally, I have a big, heavy tripod. I'm putting it down on the rock. So, I'm, so it has to be able to sustain any type of wave action, getting down into this and, and waiting to see what, where the light is going to go. So the clouds, I need that 14 millimeter stretch. So I want edge to edge to be with the clouds. So that's what I'm working with here. So I'd love to work with that about an hour before. So what happens when it storms? You have a different experience. So here there was a really intense storm. And I thought, that's great. I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I was like, OK, set up the camera, set up the tripod. So what happens as the waves are pulling back towards the ocean? It creates patterns. The rocks create patterns and pull back and it, it becomes very artistic. So aside from just like documenting the experience of the storm, yeah, it's like painting almost. So you get a different story every time you shoot. So this is four seconds. If you shoot for two seconds, is it going to be a different story? So I love that. I, I love to see what happens with this. So I like to shoot incoming waves about a 15th of a second. That's sort of my recipe. So incoming waves, 15th of a second. They're always beautiful, especially if you can put it against the rock. This is one of Florida's rocky beaches. And, and getting there super early. So the serenity for me is, is 
getting out there, getting the tripod in the water, getting down low, and just experiencing this and deciding how I want to shoot over time. So when I get there, there's often stars. I'll shoot the stars. I'll shoot the stretch of clouds across the sky. I may shoot for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, several minutes. But this is really interesting to be able to do. Seascape, different story. This is about one second to two seconds. So as the waves are pulling back to the ocean, you have another story. So you can really move into different type of imagery. And again, it has to do with the passage of time. Yes. This is Naples, Florida. This is a beautiful area. We got hit by hurricanes hard in Florida, but this is just before, so I was very, very grateful to be down here and photograph this. Everybody comes and shoots sunset, and then they pretty much pack up and they leave. <laughs> so it's so interesting to me, because I'm just getting started. So if you shoot with me, we're gonna be shooting into <laughs> about an hour after. But look what happened. Sunset was beautiful, but moving into the blue hour, you have this softness of the water. For several minutes of exposure, the water softens, the clouds stretch across the sky, and you have this sense of peacefulness and tranquility. And I think that's why I'm so drawn, you know, as a photographer and as, as an artist, to be able to be part of something like this. A little bit north of there, also in Naples, fun shot. This is, I was almost ready to give up because it was so dark. We didn't have any hint of clouds. I took my 24 to 70 millimeter lens and just really focused on that expanse of the dock because the docks were beautiful. But at the last moment, the sun did pop out. So never give up. It <laughs> already was going to happen. Damn. So let's talk about double exposures. You saw the double exposure in the beginning that I did as a self-portrait. So we can work into something that's a, just, just, it's really a lot of fun. So when I got to the beach that morning, there were no clouds. So I was, had to think of an alternate composition. So what happens is I took my Nikon Z6 II and a waterproof housing, got down in the water. And so as the water is like coming in and splashing me, making a series of shots. And I have a dome port for this camera so you get half in and half out of the water. So it was really fun aside from not getting quite what I wanted, but it led me down a different path. And that was where I took second image of the bubbles and froth. And you can pair this in the camera through the retouch menu, image overlay, just pair these pictures together. So it's a double exposure. You can do this in post also, but I like to do it in the camera because it's kind of serendipitous and funny. New Year's Day, got down to a wildlife area and photographed these amazing herons as silhouettes. And they were so pretty and so beautiful. So the, when I shoot silhouettes, I like to work with the red picture control. Have you ever worked with these picture controls and reach in there, pull out red? Red's beautiful. I use this for video, I use it for stills, but this was a single shot, just the heron. And later I took some out of focus pictures, intentionally out of focus to get the bubbles and the bokeh and got such beautiful energy. I love, love, love pairing those together. So working with that idea, uh, just a different shot. So the possibilities are really endless with double exposures or image overlays. You can really create something that's different and unique. Multiple exposures. So this is really intentional. Uh, this is where you think about it. It's okay, no clouds is a blank canvas. So I have an opportunity to work with multiple exposures. So I use that feature in my camera, set it up for like eight shots. Of course, the birds are gonna fly in and out of the frame. But making a series of shots, I use the overlay mode of darken. So darken allowed me to, like if you're familiar with multiple exposures, it tends to average if you set it on average. Try different overlay modes. So darken will keep the intensity and as these pelicans were flying at the beautiful different patterns across the sky. So I, I love that. It was, it was fun for me personally, but I love the end result. Avian wildlife. So I started out years ago and my, big, my camera was a 200 to 400 millimeter lens. So that was what I had and I, and I had a teleconverter, but it was it's really, really different. So fast forward to 2023, 20, we have new lenses and I was really motivated because I had been working with birds in my backyard and local birds to create something different. 
I love these. I've never shot. This is hooded mud dancer. It's just a duck, but the surroundings of the ducks were so spectacular. So what was happening was I was photographing basically ducks in a pond, but I was shooting in very low light. I was shooting video, and for a moment on the video, I could see that something happened, and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Switch it from movie over to stills. And this is what happening. This is a passing car. As the car passed, the red is the taillights. The maroon is the color of the car. So this flash of color is amazing. 15 frames a second. In one second, I had 15 different shots. It's unbelievable. So I fell hard in love with these birds. I just love to do that. But it's reflections. I really feel like reflections can add depth and drama to a story. Love these guys. Tricolored herons, newbies, 4K, 120 frames per second. Having that ability to take the gesture that you're experiencing and save that and then pull it back and really, it really happens in a fraction of a second. If you can extend that time and show it for a longer period of time, people can really understand what's happening and get a feeling for what that bird is like. So I love this. This was super low light. They were getting ready to sleep and they're going through all these interesting kinds of motions. So love, love, love to work with them. Yeah. Cardinals, so the Cardinals, I actually shoot out my window at home. I have a camera and a lens that's sitting in a window and the birds are here. It's just amazing to be able to do this. So I, I will shoot this. It's so uh, interesting to have that opportunity to have them that close. I can kind of hear them out the window. So love, love, love to do this. So, so this bird is amazing. So this is my favorite bird. This is the roseate spoonbill. If you come to Florida in March, you will see these birds. Just amazing. So I'm shooting on the first day of the year. So it's January 1st. Mm -hmm. Beautiful reflections. This bird virtually just comes down like a ballerina, does a pirouette, and shakes the little orange tail. So it, it's just really, really beautiful to watch. But all this happens very, very fast. So if you're shooting at 120 frames per second, you can extend this. You have more real estate to work with. But the photos are beautiful too, but I, I love that little tail shake. They're really absolutely beautiful. So we have some very interesting and unique features in the camera. This is a yellow rumped warbler. Now, I'm, I like to think I'm fairly okay with catching birds who fly, <laughs> but if you use pre-release capture, this is amazing. So I knew where the bird was. I was set up for that. I was ready for him to make this, make his move fly to a different area. But before my brain could even register that I need to press the shutter, the bird's off, right? I mean, this super fast. So the camera will capture these pre-release bursts and also post, so it's beautiful. So when I got done, it's like, oh, did I get the shot? And I'm looking at, yes, I got the shot. The wings up, wings down, it was beautiful stuff. We have bird detection and tracking, which I've used super much in this Nikon Z9. It's a beautiful feature. And auto capture, I, I can't speak enough good things about auto capture. Auto capture, I know Mike did a whole thing on race horses and if people do things with sports, I, I use it for birds. It is a camera trap. Auto capture will do whatever function that you set it to do and it will capture images for you. So the camera that I have in my window, I have it set up. So when a bird flies in, it will take the shot that I know I have a different species or something that I want to pay attention to. So auto capture is a camera trap. It's beautiful. Nikon D9 has that. So I can't even, this is a gray blue heron. This was on December 6th. In, in Florida, we have Florida fall, which is the cypress trees turn a little bit orange and get really beautiful. When I saw this bird, and I, I've never seen this before, this is the courtship ritual of the great blue heron. So they go through these absolutely beautiful motions, and, and you can capture it as a still, but it really feel like video tells the unique story of that type of behavior. So it, it was beautiful, and then the feathering is so different this time of year. 
So I've been a bit obsessed with the great blue heroes. So shooting uh, round and a quarter. This is a pied billed grebe. Now, I don't even know what that is until I looked it up. It's, it's not even a duck. It's a really unique kind of bird. But he emerged from the shadows and came into the sunlight. He has this mink coat of gray feathers and started fluffing his feathers. And I was like, oh, I'm in love with this bird. <laughs> it's just so amazing. But I love catching what we I shot stills. I shot video. But the video was absolutely something that I loved working with. We have these amazing white pelicans also. So to be able to get close, and that's the unique thing about a 600 millimeter lens that I'm working with, it has a telecruder built in, so it is 840 millimeters. If you're working with video, you have the DX crop mode, which pretty much puts you in the picture, it is so close. So it becomes more intimate, and I absolutely love that about the videography. So the fun is I have got so this is an anhinga. It's just a simple bird, but I love, again, the reflections are so amazing. So he's going through this chiropractic head move, which we'll all do when we get back off the airplanes. <laughs> and, but I love to reverse videos. So often you'll see um, something that might be reversed or not, obviously, but my second grade teacher used to show all movies in reverse. I think it stuck with me. <laughs> so that's what I love, love, love to work with. But capturing the stills, capturing the video, being able to give more of a robust, well-enhanced story is what is meaningful to me. Put it more answer. So I just want to thank you very much for coming out to Image in the USA, coming to Nikon. I thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for having me. So. <laughs>